In the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna talk about diet and psoriasis. How many of you get, get questions from your psoriasis patients whether diet uh, plays a role? Okay, great, it looks like the majority of you here. And here are my disclosures. So we're gonna answer three questions in the next 10 minutes. First is, are gluten-free diets helpful in psoriasis? Number two is that, what is the effect of dietary weight reduction on psoriasis? And then thirdly, are there any specific foods that one can potentially incorporate into their diet to make their psoriasis better? So the first question, are gluten-free diets helpful in psoriasis? Now I have a lot of patients coming to me before seeing me have tried gluten-free diet, and most of them are actually not quite sure. So what's the evidence? So first of all, I, I assume most of you have consumed gluten already today, and uh, um, it's a general name for the protein that's found in wheat, rye, and barley. And there is a form uh, of gut disease, as you know, called celiac disease, where patients have inflammatory response to this dietary uh, gluten in the small intestine. And you can test for gluten sensitivity uh, in our patients. There are two types uh, of serum tests. You can do the tissue transglutaminase test or the endomycial antibody test. But to get the bona fide diagnosis of celiac disease, you do have to uh, undergo small intestine biopsy. So this is really important. So you have in, on one end patients diagnosed with celiac disease, typically those who have undergone small intestine biopsy, or, and uh, a larger spectrum of patients uh, which haven't done that but have tested positive in terms of their gluten sensitivity. So what's the evidence between gluten and psoriasis? First of all, celiac disease is twice more likely to be seen in psoriasis patients compared to the general population. And also, we also see higher levels, more proportion of patients with gluten sensitivity based on the serum tests in our psoriasis patients. Now, what about the effect, the main question here is what's, what about the effect of gluten-free diet in our psoriasis patients? So first of all, in patients with confirmed celiac disease, having a gluten-free diet will not only improve their uh, bowel symptoms, but also can improve their psoriasis symptoms. The second category are patients who test positive for markers of gluten sensitivity. And this is where the literature is a little bit murky. They may not have had a small intestine biopsy yet. Some studies seem to suggest that a gluten-free diet can lead to improvement in clinical psoriasis severity. And then the last category are patients who test negative for serologic markers of gluten sensitivity. And studies have shown in that particular category that gluten-free diet does not help in terms of their psoriasis. And in fact, uh, oh, there, there's a very large study uh, looking at the nurses' health study where they looked at over 85,000 women who are enrolled in this nurses' health study and followed them over time, and they did not find that gluten intake uh, prospectively influenced the incidence of psoriasis. So that was very helpful to our field. So as a result, number one, so should your patients, psoriasis patients, all go out and get themselves tested for gluten sensitivity? The answer to that is no. And the reason for that is because the American College of Gastroenterology only recommend patients, certain patients, for screening, and those include those with a first-degree relative with celiac disease and those with active gastrointestinal symptoms. So in general, for patients who do not have uh, celiac disease, we don't recommend, and, and no GI symptoms and not at risk, we don't recommend universal screening, and also we, um, we do not recommend a gluten-free diet as a way of, uh, of decreasing their stress disease severity. Going on to the second question, what about the effects of dietary weight reduction in psoriasis? We know that psoriasis patients overall tend to be heavier compared to the general population. And what we found is that in the literature, the dietary weight reduction can help. Here we're talking about, about hypocaloric diets defined as 800 to 1400 calories per day. And they found that with this hypocaloric diet, you can get improvement in psoriasis disease severity as well as patients' quality of life. And there have been a few different randomized control trials showing that. This is uh, one example. This is a meta-analysis collating data from six different randomized control trials showing some benefit in terms of hypochloric diet that have led to weight reduction 
as well as decrease in psoriasis severity. In addition to that, the weight reduction also decreases the mechanical stress on our joints, and there have been some improvement with regards to psoriatic arthritis symptoms. So the National Psoriasis Foundation, based on this, recommend that dietary reduction can be done in patients with psoriasis who have BMI 25 or greater uh, as an adjunctive therapy. So all these are adjunctive therapy to the existing medical therapy. So I always emphasize to our patients that dietary interventions are adjunctive therapies to your primary medical therapy. And dietary uh, interventions alone typically are not very effective. So let's look at the third question. Are there any specific foods or nutrients or dietary patterns that may be helpful in psoriasis? So as we know, when we're looking at fatty acids, for example, we have the omega-6 versus the omega-3. The omega-6 can be considered as almost pro-inflammatory, whereas omega-3 is the more desired um, uh, fatty acid, which include eicosapentaenoic acid as well as decosapentaenoic acid. So we want this uh, more omega-3 typically and less omega-6 in our diet, and this is good for our cardiovascular health as well. So here, as you can see on the left-hand side, you have a list of omega-3 uh, rich foods. So I looked at this, and I know our breakfast had some chia seed in it, and that is uh, belonging to the uh, uh, omega-3 uh, group. And on the right-hand side, as you can see, is omega-6 rich um, uh, foods and oils that we want to, avo uh, want to avoid. So there have been actually a lot of studies looking at omega-3 supplementation in psoriasis, and unfortunately, there have been quite a lot of conflicting results on that. And in fact, when they look at the uh, supplementation, oral fish supplementation, seven out of nine studies have not shown an improvement with regards to their psoriasis severity. And um, however, if you give it intravenously, so intravenous fish oil supplementation in two different double-blinded RCTs have shown some uh, positive effects. So possibly it's due to the amount of uh, uh, omega-3 we're giving or the duration that we're giving. Regardless, at this time, oral supplementation, if you're using that to decrease psoriasis severity, there's not a lot of great data in that, um, but intravenous fish oil supplementation may be helpful. But how many of us you know, have access to intravenous fish um, oil supplementation, supplementation outside of the clinical trial setting? And then finally, for psoriatic arthritis, uh, the, in this area, they have shown that some uh, oral uh, supplementation with omega-3 can potentially reduce the use of NSAIDs. Okay, so let's take a look at the um, relationship further between foods and nutrients. And one thing that we found in the literature is that the Mediterranean diet is actually one of the few diets that, can, that is thought to be helpful in terms of potentially reducing psoriasis disease severity. So if your patient asks, is there a certain diet then that could be helpful, then uh, currently, based on low levels of evidence, possibly Mediterranean diet may be helpful. Now, what about our Western diet? What about what most of us actually eat? Um, well, probably not this audience, because this audience is very, self con uh, very health conscious. However, the larger society, most of us uh, may eat a Western diet. So there has been a lot of exciting research in this particular area. In fact, if you take mice, so for, first of all, dietary studies are very difficult to do because people, they eat what they want. It's very hard to get those controlled. So from UC Davis, this is a study where where they took mice and they fed them Western diet, and they found actually they get these increased IL-23 receptor expression in these patients, and you can get this Western diet associated psoriasis, which was very interesting. Then your question is, of the Western diet, is it the fat or the sucrose level that's really driving some of the inflammatory um, disease that we see? And what they found is that it's actually not the fat component, but rather the sugar or the sucrose content that drives the inflammatory component in these mice. Now, what if we get to the ketogenic diet? So now I'm gonna talk about diets that are not only very low caloric uh, in, in terms of intake, but also ketogenic. So pretty much very low carbohydrates in this diet. So what they found is that with very low 
um, a hypocaloric diet and a ketogenic diet, you had decreases in multiple inflammatory markers, decreases in glucose, decreases in LDL, and probably decrease in the enjoyment of life as well. So um, very difficult to adhere to this, uh, but possible improvement there. So a lot of these trials then try to get patients sort of away from the, this very low um, uh, hypocaloric diet and then transition them to a, a more tolerable hypocaloric diet. So take home message is that dietary interventions are adjunct to standard medical therapy. Gluten-free diet doesn't work for those who doesn't have bona fide celiac disease. And uh, dietary reduction is, go is good for cardiovascular health and psoriasis and possibly psoriatic arthritis. And we're still trying to understand the effect of ketogenic diet in patients with psoriasis. And with that, I want to thank you. Here's my child eating a high sucrose uh, breakfast meal.